Hi YouTube, my name is Ezekiel Kevin Annan. Welcome to my brand new video on my approach to editing images. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And also don't forget to hit the bell icon so you become the first to get new notification videos. Feel free to also share with your friends and those you think this will be of a great help to them. Thank you. Now let's go straight into the editing. In today's video, I promise to show you how to use the camera raw. So for instance, this image has great detail. You can see from the skin. So there are a few things that we would be addressing in this video. But before that, let's go and look at how camera raw will handle this and how to set presets for any future pictures that you are going to edit especially if you are taking these images in a session where you have about 60 pictures you want to keep the same temperature if you had not changed the temperatures from the location then of course you can keep the same temperature the same setting of the image so if you post all six images or all ten images you have the same temperature so now that we are in camera roll, one of the things that you could do is that in camera roll there are a lot of tools that you can use. But in this episode I'll focus on a few of them and then basically concentrate on using the patch and how to set presets for any future images. So basically what I'll do in this camera roll is try to see if by setting auto balance temperature it can take off the color casts you could realize that once i use the automatic white balance this is the before this is after i clicked on the image it takes away a certain portion of the color cast on the screen this so watch it again this is the before which is having a certain color cast in the family of the yellows now when it's taken off this is how it looks like so if we are to do any basic adjustments here normally what I'll do is that if I think that I have enough highlights but to do it effectively your hand has to be on alt whilst you pull down the highlight so whilst you are pulling down you need to be watching out for places that are overblown but from this image, you can realize that we don't have any section where it shows an overblown image. Let's do the same for the white. Okay, so when you go to the extreme, you can see places that will begin to have white in them, in the image. I will not tackle contrast because normally I don't use contrast here. I would prefer to add contrast when I am in Photoshop and doing the final part of editing after I've run my frequency separation. So in, in this part, let's assume that we are going to do this basic adjustment. And then normally I will not add blacks to it because I prefer to add them after I've done my frequency separation. But just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to add a few blacks and then the contrast to it. So this is what we want to settle on in the final image. I think that the blacks are too much. Um, I need to reduce it a little bit. Alright. So now that when you are done with this in this way, what you can do is that instead of just clicking OK to open it in Photoshop, you could come to presets and then click on presets you can see that I have a lot of presets that I've done these are presets from all the previous images that I've shot so if I need to maintain a certain temperature in a particular image I just come here and then click on it and then it gives me that that speeds up my editing so here I'm going to show you how to save this preset so that you can use it in any other image especially 
that has a certain tone like this or you want to maintain the same tone so you once you are in preset what you do is that you click on this icon it pops up and it asks you to provide a name for it so you, you can just give it a name normally what i would do is that i would prefer to use the name of the model and then the situation so for instance i'll say Anna outside natural light. So I'll, I'll use NL for natural light. And then I'll say OK. Whilst that is done, when I go through the list of presets, you could see that when I go through it, I look for Anna natural light. This is it. You can find it here. So what it means is that if I decide even not to save it and I cancel, when I come back here, I go to camera roll. Because it's saved already in the preset. I look for it. Anna natural light, where is it? Okay, there it is. So once I click on it, it gives me the same thing. So now I can open it and then start working on it. All right, so let me zoom out. So this is what we have to start with. I need to also show you things that are bothering me in terms of this image that we are going to focus on using the patch tool to deal with it. So first of all, let me activate this layer. This layer here this layer here, I did it a while back. This layer here shows the list of things that we would want to take out from this image. We are going to use a patch tool to do that. Areas like uh, the eye, where we have strands of hair here, this area, we will not use the patch tool, we will use the spot healing brush to do that. So those areas we will not work with the patch tool, we will use the spot healing. Let me put this layer off. Like I was saying, this are the places we are going to use the patch tool to work. Before I start, I would want to duplicate this layer and come to adjustment and pick the black. Pick the black. So what, what, what I want to do is I want to get it to become so intense, I take all the reds off so I can see the places that are really, really in need of attention in terms of correcting the skin. So these are the things that you need to do. Remember, we have these places to work with and make sure that we have dealt with. So including this place, this one will take care of this, will take care of this. These ones will be the places where we are going to use a spot healing brush. So now let's begin. You have to be on the copy layer to start with. And in, we remember from our previous tutorial that in order to assess the patch to you need to press on J you'll be able to go to the patch tools so let's zoom in so we see what we are doing one of the things that is interesting about the patch tool is that once you select a, a source because the patch tool deals with working with the source and a destination so once you select 
sorry. How you select a source? And you are moving it to a destination. It shows you a preview. How you move? You are, you click and hold and move it around. So if you want to copy a destination, you just push it to the destination from the source to the destination, and then you release your hand. And then you see that it takes care of. Let, let me put this one off, and then you see the before. Before we had this one here, and then after it's gone. So we do the same thing for this this side. So you're going to gradually do this. And I must say that it's patience that is required at this moment. Because if you are not patient, you might really not do it very well. And you end up not having the texture on the skin. Oh, yes. And then I'm able to move and then see where the destination I'm going to put it. So it has a little bit of detail in terms of content. You need to activate the black and white layer so that it helps you to see what you are actually doing and then the places that needs attention. So. I want to keep this video very precise. So what I'll do is that I'm going to do this and then when I'm done with dealing with this one, we'll follow with the frequency separation. So in order not to bore you with selecting individual blemishes on the face, I'll fast forward the video and then we'll continue from there. Thank you. Now we are done with the work of the patch tool. Let's put off the black and white layer to check what we have done so far. So when this work is zoomed in, I put off the black and white layer. You can see how clean the patch tool has worked. Let me put the black and white layer back and then you can see the difference. Have you seen that difference? Then put it back and then you can see even in this area the amount of work that the patch tool has done. But what it does is that you still you still have a great deal of the skin texture intact for you. You can you can look at it. It almost looks like you have done frequency separation. That is, if you have the patience to really work with the patch tool, it's going to give you a great result. And that is the foundation to you getting a very good image that looks natural without too much editing. So now that is done. So now I'm going to work on how to use, because we need to use the spot healing brush to deal with the rest of the obstacles in the image, like this strands of hair and this one. That is the work of the spot healing brush, and I would use it for this area and then this area. You remember when I still have the layer that shows the things that we are, we are going to take away from the image. So you can see. So now let me put it off and then let's work with it. Always remember you need to be on the copy background layer. But that's what you are working on. The, bag, the original background layer has the main default now we are going to use the spot healing brush to deal with this. So for instance, you just have to make it a little bit bigger than the size that you are going to rub it. 
So the size you want to replace. You make sure you paint once. So you do the same for the eyes. So that I can take away all the stray hairs in the eyes. So what, what, what we are doing is that we are trying to take off all the hair strands that that are interfering with the eyes. I must say that you have to do it patiently if you want the, a very good result. Because you have to recognize that it's by patience that you're able to build this eye back to its normal state. It has to look close to it being natural with no interference. Okay, here I think that what we need to do here is this. You have to take away most of the things that you can take away. And then what will happen is that we will try to duplicate one part of the eye, either this part and come and fix it here, or this part, reverse it and put it here so that we'll have the eyes looking exactly like it has not been touched. Someone will also choose to do, instead of doing that, someone will also choose to do what we call, he will create a brush and then try to paint the hair back. But that's not what we are going to do for this one. I'm showing this technique. Maybe in subsequent retouching that I will do, I might show you that technique as well. So, what I'll do is I'll fast forward this process, and then once I am done, we'll be back with the video. done with fixing the eye so what we'll do is that we'll have to merge all these layers and move on to the next step which is the frequency separation that will be in the third part of this tutorial where I'm going to show you my style of frequency separation and why I prefer to use the dust and scratches because this technique, like I said in the previous video, is able to help you to maintain quite a great deal of texture on the skin. So if you are able to do it well, whether you are an amateur or a, an advanced photographer, you should be able to get it right if you do it well. Thank you.